Greetings, and welcome to another uh, set of evening streams by me. <clears throat> We're starting out by uh, my past weekend. Um, as in the title of the stream you can see, uh, this is kind of a wrap-up of my first time at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, went with a couple of good friends. Um, it was a very, very interesting weekend. Uh, they fortunately are our old hand at Comic-Con and gave me some good advice uh, and I also mentally prepared myself in a few different ways. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, arrived in San Diego on Thursday, or sorry, on Wednesday. Uh, we got all set with our, uh, home base, let's call it, for the uh, duration of Comic-Con. Uh, we had, when the when the opportunity presented itself, the opportunity to get uh, tickets to uh, day one, uh, the preview night of Comic-Con. Uh, we passed on that in favor of going to HopCon at Stone. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful beer event. Uh, it is also the release party for... Uh, the collaborative beer between uh, Stone, Will Wheaton, uh, and Drew Curtis uh, of FARC. Um, this was the fourth uh, year that they've done Woot Stout, a Stone, a Farking, Wheaton, Woot Stout. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this is, of course, since the first time I'm going to Comic-Con, it was also my first time going to HopCon. Uh, one of the things that they had out at Stone, uh, in addition to opening up their entire Liberty Station um, venue, uh, the restaurant, to HopCon, closing everything except for nothing. Um, so there were a lot of people. They had a lot of good beers. But they also had, and this was one of the things that I loved, all four vintages of Woodstock. So going back to 2013, and fortunately for myself, uh, thanks to that, um, I was able to complete my vertical. <clears throat> and if you're not a beer fan, that means it, it's uh, vint It's just like wine, you know, vintages. Uh, so now I have a uh, the 2013, 14, 15, and now 16 um, vintages of the Wood Stout. So at some point I will be drinking a lot of beer that is very, for me and where I live, rare. Um, then we went on to Thursday, where <clears throat> uh, I had had some plans. I was going to try and go to the Funko booth, uh, or at least try and get uh, in on that. And that was not going to happen the entire weekend. Uh, from everything that I perceived and saw, um, I would have had to stay overnight any given night to try and get a chance at getting into the Funko booth. Um, so anything that I wanted there, um, I'm either going to have to just pass on because I'm not going to spend aftermarket, extreme aftermarket prices for them. Um, or I was able to get most everything that I was interested in um, at the retailers that had partnered with Funko for <clears throat> it's convention exclusive, but it's also exclusive to this retailer. It's got a different sticker on it if you buy it at the retailer, but I was able to do that for most of mine. Um, I have here to show off a couple of the more interesting things, and I'll get to them as I uh, go through, that were um, from some of the events. Um, I saw some really good panels over the weekend. On uh, Thursday, um, I was able to go see the panel about Moana, the upcoming Disney movie, and it was uh, really fairly interesting. Um, gave a lot of good information about that movie uh, that is coming up. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, learned a lot of information. 
Um, I'm sure if you're uh, a fan of many things geek, you'll know that uh, um, Alan Tudyk is playing Hey Hey, the rooster in Moana. Um, the uh, gentleman there, the directors, as well as uh, writers and that sort of thing, um, had planned originally for him to be a fairly uh, crafty and devious character, but that wasn't working. Um, so in Hey Hey, the Rooster, they have made an effort to make quite possibly the dumbest in, in intelligence, not in, like, why the hell are they there? But I have no idea on that, um, because I haven't seen any of the footage from the movie, aside from the test footage um, that they showed it during the panel. Um, but they took his intelligence from, you know, moderate level to bottom of the barrel. Um, so it'll be interesting hearing uh, Alan's rendition of a stupid chicken. Um, seems like everybody involved with that movie's got a lot of lot going on. That's going to be very, seems to be like, it seems like it's going to be fairly good. Um, Friday, most of, uh, uh, I also on Thursday my first ever panel at Comic Con happened to be going and happened to be um, the general admission line was ridiculous and poorly organized, um, and many uh, and that was pretty much the consensus not just from me but from my my friends who had been before. Um, the use of the RFID badges worked great, um, but the planning of the uh, plan for getting everybody in there kind of initially was kind of a cluster. Um, in fact, so much so that it was easier for us to go into Hall H, the coveted Hall H arena, um, and watch the DreamWorks panel, uh, the first panel of Comic-Con in Hall H than it was to go through the front doors of the convention center and go get lanyards and bags. Um, this year they sent uh, the badges out along with the RFID cards um, that were tied with them. Um, so that was a, a fairly interesting thing, um, that that was the situation there. Um, a lot of fun uh, encouraged me based on what I'd seen to that I'm more likely to see the movie Trolls. Um, Boss Baby, uh, which they showed briefly, was not really um, up to snuff, particularly. Um, I could be wrong. It could turn out to be fantastic. I wasn't impressed. Trolls is, of course, based off of the, the little toys. <clears throat> And that movie um, has a lot of texture. It's very, very um, textural, even though it's CG. Um, you you kind of feel at a couple of points like you could have seen Sackboy walk through there and, and he wouldn't have felt out of place. Um, music's good, entertaining cast. Um, it wasn't in my top list of movies that I was going to go see this year, but it quickly went in there. Um, because it did actually pick up and become interesting. Moana is definitely a most must see, must 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 see. Um, the voice talent in it is great. Um, the story looks to be highly amusing. They've done a great job with it so far, from what we've seen. Uh, those of us who were in the panel um, on Friday, um, I managed to uh, get my friends woefully sunburned while I was inside uh, at panels. Um, if you've never been to San Diego Comic Con, if you want to go into Hall H, uh, which is a 6,500-person 6, 6, venue within the convention center, um, particularly on Saturday. Saturday was when they had the Warner Brothers and Marvel Studios panels, as well as some interstitial panels in between. Um, you almost have to camp out overnight. Uh, you would, at the very least, have to burn through your Friday Um if you've got another, if you've got friends, you can trade off or or other things. And, um, 
the plan had originally been that, that I was going to wait when my friends uh, went to, uh, attempted to go to the Rick and Morty panel uh, in the Indigo Ballroom. Um, I had run into some other friends who had tried to go to the Steven Universe panel and did not manage to successfully get in. Um, and so I, when I went and found where uh, my friends, I'd gone off to try and do something else briefly um, and got lost. <clears throat> uh, made my way back over and uh, found our spot and told them to go. Um, this was about four hours early for the panel that they had wanted to go to. Um, and probably a half hour or so later, um, it might have been less, but I think it was probably a half hour, 45 minutes later, uh, they came back over and said it just was not happening. Um, and then they advised me to go to uh, the panels that I had wanted to go to, that I was going to try and go to after they'd come back from theirs. And that did not, uh, and so I did. Um, unfortunately, in the process, they were woefully sunburned because they were outside and uh, we had forgotten sunscreen. Uh, partly my fault, partly. If you get sunburned, it's partly your fault because, you know, it's your skin, but... Um, and they uh, directed me to go. And I was able to go to uh, the Shatner Singularity panel, but I came in about midway through that, so I didn't get too much aside from uh, the surprise guest of Stan Lee uh, at that panel. It was actually pretty cool. Um, he's working with Bill Shatner. Uh, Shatner Singularity is uh, Bill Shatner's uh, comic book company uh, that's in the process of starting in, in primarily digitally uh, through Comixology. Um, and, uh, he's doing a comic book based off of a poem by Stan. Um, but we did learn, uh, those of us who were in the panel that, uh, Stan did, uh, very, very recently do his cameos for Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, and another one he wasn't allowed to say. Um, this was Stan's last Comic-Con, um. The man is 93. Um, it's going to be a tragedy when he's no longer with us, but it is going to be dramatically sooner rather than later. Um, he is a wonderful human being, and the panels that I was at uh, did show me, um, that Shatner Singularity did show me um, that there are certain people, uh, Jenna Bush is one of them, who are spectacular spectacular moderators. Uh, she managed to make things that I didn't give a rat's about uh, interesting, uh, the other various comics, and she could politely and eloquently wrangle <clears throat> the force of nature that is Stan the Man Lee. Um, following that was the... Uh, and what's great about Comic-Con, if you've never been, is they never clear... It's great and a problem two sides, same coin. Um, they don't clear the ballrooms. They don't clear the venues for the panels before the next panel starts. If you want to leave, you can leave, and then the next people will come, and then they load in enough people to fill the seats that were vacated. Um, so the next panel after uh, the Shatner Singularity that I went to, uh, which was in the same venue, which was one, I believe, the third largest one, uh, 6 BCF. Um, it's a very large uh, ballroom that has a, that they can section off, and the BCF portion is one of the larger ones. It's I believe it's Hall H, then um, ball then then ballroom 20, and then uh, 6 BCF, and then I believe 6 A, as to size wise, um, and. Um, fortunately, on Friday, all the panels that I went to, that I was going to, were in BCF. I would desperately have loved, at any point during these, to have gone to uh, the kind of funny meet and greet at Polite Provisions, or uh, any of the panels hosted by Greg Miller, but that just did not happen. Just you gotta, sometimes you gotta pick and choose what you're gonna do, and Friday. 
it was either this or my friends were going to murder me. It, I was going to go to these panels. If I had tried to go to the uh, meet and greet, my friends would have murdered me um, in my sleep during the like two hours of sleep we got that night. Um, so, um, and then Sunday I decided that I'd rather have real food than attend the panels. Um, <laughs> you gotta pick when you if you can get real food and you can take a break. I recommend it. Um, <clears throat> especially after what you got coming up. Um, following the Shatner Singularity panel was uh, the panel for um, People of Earth and Powerless. Uh, People of Earth is a comedy on TBS being executive produced by Conan O'Brien. Um, it's a comedy about alien abductees. I mean, let's just be realistic. Um, it was a lot funnier. I probably wouldn't have seen it. I'm not a big fan of television comedies. But I'll add it to my to my TiVo and, and download it to, to watch it. Uh, or in have it recorded to watch, as it was actually funny. Um, <clears throat> Powerless was, is, uh, I'm sure, uh, if you're in here and looking at any of this, uh, Powerless was, a, or is, a mid-season series on NBC. Uh, it's an office comedy set in an insurance company in the DC universe. It is not tied to the movies, it is not tied to the CW series. They have it's not tied to, to the Gotham side of things. They have full reign to play with the to to monkey around and play around with any portion of the DC universe because it's a completely side portion. It's not a part of the comics. It's not a part of the movies. It's not a TV universe. It's its own thing because it's purely a comedy. Um, I recommend it. I'd, I'd suggest you check out the pilot. When, uh, if the opportunity presents itself, it was entertaining. Um, then the ones that I was was really there for, um, <clears throat> um, American Gods uh, on Stars. Um, I was worried about it because it's one of the American Gods is my favorite novel, and one of and it's one of those shows that it's either going to be wonderful or a complete and utter train wreck. Um, there's not, it's one of those things that it's nowhere in between. Um, I have a lot of confidence it's going to be wonderful, especially uh, considering uh, Neil Gaiman is executive producing on it, and it seems like he's taking an actual active role in it, and not just um, being an executive producer because his name is on the novel it's based on. Um, we knew about Mr. Wednesday and all of the, the other characters, but then uh, at the panel they announced uh, Kristen Chenoweth um, as Easter. Um, I recommend just look on IMDb if you want to know the, the, the actors that are in it. It's got a great cast, and it looks like they're keeping the, the, the tone of the book, and they're, they're working through it very, very well. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, following that was the Orphan Black panel, which is functionally going to be the last Orphan Black panel at any Comic-Con, uh, so I really did want to go to that. Um, that is because the fifth season of Orphan Black, the one coming up next year, um, is going to be the final season of Orphan Black. Um, if you have never watched Orphan Black, um, it is available streaming on Amazon Prime, uh, and I do highly recommend it. Um, it... Uh, the lead actress in it, Tatiana Maslany, is uh, a twice Emmy-nominated uh, actress for her roles, plural, on the show. Um, the thing that she, it's dials through an entire conspiracy involving uh, human cloning and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, Tatiana plays. The Leda clones, which is one of the branches of the of the clones, and so there are scenes. Uh, one of the primary ones that I like to use as an example is in the second season. If you look it up, um, you can look on YouTube for a clone dance party. Uh, you can just work in black clone dance party. Um, it is a scene at the end of the second season where there are six characters and three actors. Um, Four of those six characters are played by one actress, Tatiana Maslany. Um, 
And the great thing about it is every one of the characters is a distinctly different character. There are scene there is a great there is a great uh, scene in the first season um, where one clone has to meet the daughter of another clone while pretending to be that other clone. Um, and it doesn't and they're played by the same actress. <clears throat> but it comes across as this character pretending to be this character rather than this character which it could have easily done with a lesser skilled actress. It is spectacular. The cast is awesome. They are funny. They are entertaining. So after that, I went back to the line and we waited. Uh, and uh, my friends uh, were able to go to the uh, expo floor for a little while. And um, then came back and we waited for many hours. Uh, for uh, the time when we could get our wristbands to get into Hall H. Uh, I'm not going to go and find one. Uh, but Hall H on a Saturday is a madhouse. Uh, the requirement was that you had you got your wristband on Friday night. They started distributing them at 9. They ended up bringing them to us. Uh, they ended up getting up to around to us at about 12.30. Because again, this is 6,500 people that they're putting wristbands on to so that the next day they can all make sure that they get into the, the Hall Age. Um, so we did that, and we had the option of camping out overnight. That nonsense. We had beds that we could sleep in. Um, but we had to be back by 7.30 in the morning the following day. So seven and a half hours, there's seven hours after we got our wristbands, we had to be back in line. And we still had to travel back to the base, back to base, and return. And, you know, shower and sleep in that in between. Um, it was not necessarily pleasant, but we accomplished it. We got back, and the first panel of the day on Saturday was Warner Brothers, where we were treated to many things that, that you saw during the day. Now, a lot of people have asked me if I saw any of the stuff when I just had discussions outside of Twitch, uh, if I saw any of the TV stuff. That was in Ballroom 20 during the day of, during Saturday. So it was in a completely different location. And if you leave Hall H, you then have to go and stand in the standby line, which is thousands of people, to try and get back in. So my entire day was spent in Hall H. So all I saw was the movie presentations. It was uh, the DC presentations with the DC movies um, for Flash, Cyborg, Justice League, all of those, followed by... Um, um, Kong Skull Island, um, Guy Ritchie's uh, new version of King Arthur, and then uh, the one that many people have heard uh, interesting tales about online, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Uh, if you haven't heard of the movie... It is a continuation of J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World, uh, started with Harry Potter. It is about a Hufflepuff who screws up and has to fix things. Uh, his name is Newt Scamander. If you know anything about the mythology of the world, you'll know that his grandson ends up marrying Luna from the uh, Harry Potter movies um, in the epilogue. So... Um, <clears throat> At the beginning of that panel, everybody in the audience was given one of these. Uh, let's do this so the text is correct way up for you. Uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's the film's logo right here. And then it says right here, and Newt Scamander's Wand. Or Newt Scamander Wand. This is Newt's Wand. It is pretty beefy and pretty heavy, and they do sell for a decent amount online. You can find them, though, on eBay. Uh, they're a noble collection. They're the ones who make uh, the collectible version of the wands that you can buy for a lot of money online. Uh, I do have you know, my own personal wand from the Wizarding World at Universal, and then I've got the Sirius Black one also from Universal. But these are the ones that, if you didn't go to Universal to buy them, um, <clears throat> that was followed up by um, 
let's see, then was the Star Trek one, which was which had great panelists. And I hold no ill will toward the moderator because uh, it's I forget his name, but he's the showrunner for uh, the new Star Trek series. Which there was a lot of stuff like at the end. Oh, the the foot first footage from the new series. It wasn't impressive. It was like the 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 opening scene of it. It was the ship leaving the dock. Whoop de doo. But it was a panel with Bill Shatner, um, Brett Spiner, Michael Bourne, um, uh, Jerry Ryan, and I hate when I forget a part of, when I forget a doctor's name, uh, especially a good one. Sorry about this. I'm looking this up so that I can not make a complete ass out of myself. Uh, Scott Bakula. Uh, they had. I don't know why that changed over to that. <clears throat> Scott Bakula. Uh, they had a rep. Basically, they had a representative from each. Uh, of the primary series in the Star Trek TV universe. Um, it was a bummer that they didn't bother with anybody from the movies. Yes, I realize Star Trek Beyond just came out, but you could add people from, from the new movies come and additionally been there, and that would have, again, created more hype. And, I mean, as expected, the first people, Bill Shatner and Brett Spiner and Michael Thorne, pretty much dominated the panel. Um, and that's the and it's a, it's a really a testament to to any time you can watch a panel and you can can when you can get to the people who are on the end who are on the far end of it and get them involved. It's a real testament um, to that. Um, so I mean that was a, a, okay. Um, I'm a Star Trek fan and it was just okay to me. And that was me getting to see people who I'd watched on TV for decades. Um, following that was the. Uh, Aliens 30th anniversary panel. Um, the moderator was better, but not great. Um, for that, um, it was James Cameron, Sigourney Weaver, all you know, Lance Henriksen. But again, the problem is, is that. <clears throat> Everybody who ends up at the far end, they had the 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 uh, woman who played Newt back in the day, who's now apparently now a fourth grade teacher. Um, but you go far enough down the line, and Lance Henriksen and the girl who played Newt were, you know, they were there, but not a whole lot of interaction on the panel because you gotta make sure everybody you gotta make sure it gets beyond James Cameron and Sigourney Weaver and those guys. I mean. Move it along. Um, and then by far the worst of the interstitial panels was the uh, Entertainment Weekly Women Who Kick Ass. There were plenty of people on that panel who should have made that panel exceptional. You had Tatiana Maslany, you had Lucy Lawless, you had Ming-Na Wen. Those are the, the, the ones that, that just focus on my brain, who, aside from Ming-Na, not a whole lot of interaction in there because the moderator couldn't moderate. You could tell she was a magazine interviewer because she asked a question, waited for the answer, and then moved on. Couldn't delve in, couldn't get that maybe we can get some answers from somebody else. Let's, let's really drag some information out. Let's not sit there and just stand at a podium and ask a question. That's not what a moderator does. Not what a good moderator does. So, then we get into Marvel Studios. Now, I know there are many people who are fans of the, who are DC fans, and they are hardcore DC fans. And I know there are people who are hardcore Marvel fans. And I know that Warner Brothers had the Warner Brothers panel dramatically longer than Marvel's. Dramatically. Uh, by like 45 minutes, and that is 
pretty damn long for a difference in time. They Marvel mopped the floor. Um, hosted by Chris Hardwick, um, Conan O'Brien had hosted the, the Warner Brothers uh, as the moderators. Um, but Chris Hardwick is, from everything that I have seen and everything I have experienced, Chris, Chris Hardwick and Conan O'Brien, but Chris Hardwick as a moderator for a panel at Comic-Con is exceptional. He is brilliant. He is talented. He is great. And I haven't sat back and watched Talking Dead or any of the, the after shows that he's ended up hosting on like AMC. But I have to think that because those are so conversational and, because, and like Conan with his late night show, because those because of the nature of those shows that makes them excellent moderators for panels at Comic-Con so they can get to the real meat to get things that are good. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, you've seen the footage from uh, that was released of Doctor Strange. You've seen... Uh, oh, wait, you haven't. Because there was footage that we, they, had the they had the major cast members of Black Panther. Of course, at the very end, they announced... Uh, Captain Mar, the actress who's going to be playing Captain Marvel, um, and that's wonderful. The footage from Guardians of the Galaxy was great. Everybody who is apprehend now, plenty of people on this note are apprehensive and upset that California Adventures Tower of Terror is going to be coming a Guardians of the Galaxy attraction. I was apprehensive about it. I am no longer so. Um, my friends who I went with, uh, one of whom is press and covers Disney for, and, and worked and was there as press for a Disney website. Upon learning some of the further information, which did require going to the Disney Parks blog, after, pretty much moments after it was announced inside the panel, features that were expect that were exciting in Florida are coming to California now through this. The filmed portions, the portions that of, of video that you have, because it's still remaining the same drive. It's not like they're tearing down Tower of Terror and building something else. It's just putting a shell on the building, changing the facade, and changing the stuff inside. That's it. It's not changing the ride systems. It's not changing that. Um, so people freaking out about that. It's the same freaking thing. It's just not Twilight Zone Tower of Terror anymore. Whoopity do! <clears throat> I'd rather have randomized drops, drops that coincide to music, and video portions directed by freaking James Gunn, directed by the. Yes, people are some Disney people are upset that they're that the quite frankly the best current Imagineer at Disney is being tasked with this, but quite frankly, for this man, it's an afternoon worth of work. It's not like taking up every moment of his time. He can look at other things and focus on other things and be just fine. Stop freaking out, people. There's no need to freak out. Um, it's going to be good. It looks like it's going to be a short turnaround, so it, so there's not going to be a huge amount of work going on to it. It's mostly gonna, looks like it's mostly going to be interior, exterior, and then changing out some, some film and some, some software on that. But <clears throat> the footage from... Spider-Man Homecoming, the thing that the the special thing that the director did with uh, for Thor Ragnarok, because it was um, based off of one of his movies. I haven't seen his movies. I want to see it now because of the the thing that they did with Thor. But it was great. It was highly entertaining. Um, but everything from that kicked the snot out of it. There's the new uh, the new. Uh, Fanfare, the new Marvel fanfare. So it's no longer just the comic flipping. It's scored by Michael Giacchino. There's, <clears throat> it's just a bunch of brilliance. It's great. People need to not worry about it. Um, everything looks that I've that I saw was great. Marvel pummeled the crap out of Warner Brothers. So that was Saturday. Sunday I had planned on doing some stuff, but went ended up going to brunch at a, at a 
nearby restaurant, uh, and that was my first real food in the time I'd been in San Diego, other than, you know, Hopcon. So the food was Hopcon, and then not real food again until Sunday. And I ended up passing on the Lego Dimensions panel uh, because of that. Wish I'd been able to go. I would have loved to have known more of the more of the stuff that's coming up this year. But it's a trade-off, and food was way more important in my mind at that at that point. Uh, but after that, I went and was able to explore the uh, exhibition floor again. I I went on <clears throat> on Thursday after the Moana panel, and uh, did some exploring then. Um, but I didn't go back until Sunday, and I discovered on Sunday that. Um, if you were at San Diego Comic Con and wanted to pre-order uh, X Men Apocalypse, which I did because I I'd already I'd actually even already pre-ordered it on Amazon because I enjoyed the movie. Was it great? No, but that's but the reason why it wasn't great is because it was following such an exceptional movie that was Days of Future Past. Um, but one of the things that they did was as part of it was if you pre-ordered it directly from Fox, so I canceled my pre-order on Amazon um, because I wanted this. Um, yes, I ended up having to pay tax with one, not with the other, but you'll understand why. Um, if you pre-ordered it from Fox there, you got to take home this. Now, yes, it's a record, and no, it's not an actual record inside, but it is a mock-up record, so you can take and display it. Um, Dazzler, if you, uh, this is a replica of a prop that was used in... Uh, one of the deleted scenes. I believe it actually showed up in the background of one of the scenes, too, but um, it was a lot of fun. Um, was the movie great? Not necessarily, but was it better than it could have been? Yes. Um, nothing else sparks my mind at this point uh, from Comic-Con. Um, I got some great exclusives. Most of, most of what I ended up... Uh, what I most of the exclusives that I had wanted to get were from the Funko booth, so I ended up getting most of those once I once I got home uh, because New Mexico is a much easier place to uh, get pops and that sort of thing than uh, than uh, California. And yes, food is a wonderful thing. Um, um, La Puerta, I think it is. It's a, uh, a cantina kind of thing off to the side. They, they have a they start brunch at like ten, and we were there real close to opening. Then like having a beer and some good food uh, beforehand before going to Comic Con. Um, Sorry, I didn't respond to your uh, comment and chat earlier. I <laughs> was... I had something else up on my screen from uh, earlier. Um, but it was a wonderful um, event. It was... Uh, I had a lot of fun. I went in, uh, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, home of Walter White, and um, we have a, prop, a population in Albuquerque of probably 500,000, um, give or take, and so 150,000 people at Comic-Con, I mentally just prepared for half of the city of Albuquerque to be in a convention center, and then when it wasn't quite that, I was not so overwhelmed. I still had plans for things that I wanted to do, and book. And I'm not upset that I didn't do some of them. Um, but part of that is because I had tempered my expectations on what I was going to be able to do and what I was not going to be able to do. Um, and I really wanted to thank my friends for that. <sighs> um, I'm not sure what else to say. Um, If you have the opportunity, I recommend it trying to go to Comic Con. Um, it's an amazing thing and surprising and wonderful in the best possible way. Um, so that's kind of the end of my wrap up for Comic Con. Uh, 
if you have any uh, comments or anything like that, um, I am probably going to be sending this to my YouTube channel, so um, you're probably going to be watching it there, since I know there wasn't anybody really here for me rambling this on Twitch. But uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, and feel free to communicate with me. Send me a whisper on Twitch. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch at Ravenwish. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Ravenwisha. Same thing at YouTube, youtube.com slash Ravenwisha. Uh, you can tweet at me, at Nuisha. Um, feel free to also add me on either of those. I'm not on my Xbox a whole lot at the moment because I can't stream from there. Uh, since I don't have a capture card, I have no way of streaming from there. And I'm really enjoying playing on my PS4 uh, and my Vita. I'm a proud member of Vita Island. Um, so, uh, I hope you've enjoyed, and uh, I will see you in the future. If you are watching this on Twitch, uh, I will be ending the stream, and I will be coming back shortly with some late-night unboxings. Um, while I was away, uh, I received the July Loot Crate and Smuggler's Bounty. If you are watching this later on YouTube, those are elsewhere in the channel. Um, thank you very much for being here. And have a great evening.